Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the simple and AI-powered rewards and recognition platform for employee engagement. Do your employees hate Monday mornings, lose motivation throughout the week, and appear to be working just for the salary? Then most likely, your employees are burnt out. Employee burnout is a psychological and physical condition that emerges from continuous stress or extended work hours. Hi, everyone. I am Shushmita, your host from the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Today, we'll talk about employee burnout or say workplace burnout. Please join me to welcome my guest today, David Sher. David is a burnout and meaningful work expert who has helped thousands of managers and employees design a burn-proof culture, discover meaning in their work, and significantly enhance creativity, efficiency, and the bottom line in the process. Hi, David. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much, Susmita. It's uh, it's an honor to be on the show. Thank you once again for being here. And to begin with, please, could you introduce yourself to our listeners today? Sure. So um, my name is David Shar. I'm located um, in Baltimore, Maryland in the USA and um, where I live with my wife and five children and my 150 pound dog. And yes, a Bernese mountain dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's the wild ride around here. I embrace the chaos. Um, but, uh, but I practice industrial organizational psychology, which is a really long title, but, but really what it means is that I go into organizations and I help them, uh, specifically I help them with, with their culture and leadership issues, um, uh, the way that, that, that might be affecting, um, uh, employee motivation, uh, burnout, right. uh, things like mm. that. And, uh, and that's, that's what I do for a living. It, it's a, it's a blast. And I do that inside organization <laughs> right. and, and on stage, wherever. Yeah. So what exactly, uh, made you interested in employee motivation and um, especially, you know, employee burnout? Um, ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> not, not the answer <laughs> you were expecting, huh? So, so I was I was a serial entrepreneur and I had a small ice cream franchise. I would definitely get motivated with an ice yeah, cream. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's easy <laughs> okay. with ice cream. But I had this little franchise, uh, this little ice cream parlor um, in Baltimore, Maryland. And I had no idea what I was doing in business. So I was sort of like making it up as I went along. Um, my employees came, uh, most of them, from the inner city of Baltimore, Maryland, and um, really rough streets and, and rough neighborhoods around there. And um, these these young adults came and scooped ice cream, and somehow I accidentally helped create this environment where they wanted to be at the ice cream parlor, uh, even on their days off. Uh, they didn't want to leave. They, um, they, I didn't have the turnover that all the other restaurants around me had. I didn't have um, the theft issues that all the other restaurants around me had. These, these young adults were completely engaged, and it was beyond just employee engagement. They found meaning in scooping ice cream. Um, this, I, I wasn't sure about the impact that I was having until one day. Um, one of my crew members who had a boyfriend who was in a local gang, uh, she came into work one day. She was about 16 or 17 years old, uh, and she seemed really down. And, and she usually was like the life of the party. So this was odd. So I called her in the back and I said, uh, what's going on? Um, is everything OK? And she explained to me that her boyfriend had been found shot multiple times and left for dead that morning. Oh. Um, he was flown to the hospital via via medevac helicopter um, and things didn't look good. I tried like shooing her out of the uh, out of the ice cream parlor. I told her some things are bigger than ice cream. Like like you got to go be with family, be somewhere wherever you need to be. And she said, no, I need to be here. I can only be here this is my happy place. And that that was like a load of bricks on my shoulder, of recognizing what business could be, what leadership could be, what what meaning there could be at work 
and looking around at my friends who were doctors and lawyers and teachers and nurses, all these things that are objectively meaningful jobs, um, were dreading going to work on Monday morning. But these teenagers and young adults where in the industry you have well over 100% annual turnover and disengagement and things like that, they just wanted to be scooping ice cream. They found meaning in what they were doing. Uh, and so that led me to the academic field of organizational psychology and researching burnout and, and employee motivation. Brilliant. Quite an interesting story, David. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, uh, now uh, employees and leaders are busier than ever before, which may be contributing to their burnout. So could you describe uh, exactly what we mean by burnout and maybe expand in on the common indicators that someone is burnt out before we really you know, delve into this topic? Sure. Yeah, they, they are busier than ever. In, and um, as we can get into, you know, it's not just that they're busier than ever, but it's that there are now all of these barriers between them uh, that stand between them doing the work that they are there to do, that they that they find meaning in doing. Um, but when we see burnout, when we talk about burnout, a lot of times we talk about it like depression. Uh, somebody who's feeling down for a day might say, I feel depressed, but that's not clinical depression. Um, I, I think it's similar with burnout. We use the, we mm. use the, the word a little too um, casually and too often. Mm. Um, but mm. like depression, burnout takes time and, and happens over a period of time. Um, but it's it's three main um, symptoms, if you will, um, are emotional exhaustion, uh, feeling feeling, you know, not necessarily physical exhaustion, though that typically comes along with it and mental exhaustion typically comes along with it. But just feeling emotionally exhausted, emotionally spent is one of the top three um, symptoms. The other ones are this increased cynicism. You know, where, where where we become cynical about our work and, and the meaning mm. in our work. Um, and the last would be a uh, reduced sense of self-efficacy or personal accomplishment, where we don't feel like we are getting out of our work what we're putting into it. We don't feel like we're being as, as effective as we as we should be or as appreciated yeah. as we should be. It can be, yeah. Um, yeah, mm. so that those are the main symptoms that we see. So it excludes our physical health, right? The physical burnout that we see, like the physical, yeah. So it, when you talk about employee burnout, does it typically exclude the physical health? Yeah, so um, physical health is typically uh, something that comes down the line uh, with burnout. So it doesn't, it doesn't typically start there. But it usually it gets you on this path where we do see people using a lot more sick days. And some of them are actually mental health days, right? Um, they are uh, psychosomatic symptoms. Um, and, and, and some of them are very real symptoms. You know, that, that mind body connection where, you know, when we're emotionally exhausted, it is very quickly. Um, pours over into physical exhaustion and mental exhaustion, just not being able to think anymore. Um, so we do see things like that. We see headaches, um, we see uh, body aches, we see nausea, we see people that just don't want to get out of bed. We, you can see any of those things, but even absent those physical symptoms, uh, somebody could certainly uh, be experiencing burnout. Um, it doesn't have to get there before we start calling it burnout. Right. Thank you for giving such a clear description of burnout, uh, David. Uh, now, uh, talking about multitasking. So uh, there are people who love to say that I'm a multitasker. I can have more on my plate than anybody else can have. So why do you think this concept has always been a badge of honor? Yeah, I think I think there's a lot that's like a badge of honor now, right? Like I'm a great multitasker. I work, you know, um, you often hear people with the humble brags, like, um, yeah, I worked 50 hours this week or 60 hours this week or whatever. And they say it like, woe is me. But really, they they want your praise because we see work as like sort of this value. Um, and and uh, yeah, I think that it's really bad um, for society and for the individuals where it becomes sort of this pissing contest, like, who works harder, who works more, um, you know, who works more hours, who gets more done. Uh, multitasking, you know, uh, there's some science that suggests that it doesn't 
that it doesn't exist in the form that we think it does. It's really rapid switching between tasks um, as opposed to us being able to, to literally multitask the way we think about it. Um, and that's and that's exhausting. But this culture where we value hard work, there is there there's a lot of benefit to that. But there's also a lot of dangers um, where we feel this peer pressure to do more um, and mm-hmm. to push harder oh, until until um, one day we look around and, and we are um, either burned out or and or the other side of that is everything outside of work has crumbled around us. Our family isn't there for us anymore. Um, our friends aren't there for us anymore because we put everything into our work um, and never calculated the cost of that. Very true. I completely agree with you on those points. And there I think it's uh, so essential for uh, managers or leaders to you know, realize and accept that they don't have to do it all on their own and that they should uh, utilize the importance of uh, uh, delegation, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, we really need to think about what is, you know, essential and urgent. Um, there's an, uh, the Eisenhower matrix. I don't know if um, you or the, the listeners are familiar with this, but the Eisenhower matrix is sort of, um, it's a two by two uh, little grid where you can measure out what is urgent and what is important, right? And mm-hmm. and if we think about tasks in that way, we can think, okay, what's urgent and important? Those are the things that need to be done now. Uh, what is urgent but less important? Maybe those can be delegated. What is important but not urgent? Maybe that could be put on our to-do list for next week. And what is neither important or urgent, we can we can avoid those tasks. Why even why even do those? Um, and so we really have to think about these things because a lot of times uh, within within some work cultures, everything is important and urgent. So we think we have to do it all. So that's step one. That's even before you get to delegating necessarily. It's like really understanding what's important, what's urgent, and not misrepresenting those tasks uh, to yourself or to your employees. The second thing is to trust other people. They're not going to do everything exactly the way you do it. And that's okay because you're not perfect. Um, you know, giving people the space to do things and to experiment and to do them in their way, you might end up learning things. You might end up getting a better quality uh, product out of that. Um, we, we need to trust and to delegate while also being careful that we're not overloading um, our employees or colleagues that work alongside us. Hmm. And also, you know, you have to show the courage that shows your vulnerability and uh, open up to your team members that, hmm. see, this is this is where I stop and this is where I want you people to carry forward this task, isn't it? Yes, yes. I love, I love that point, you know, modeling uh, good hmm. work-life balance or work-life integration type behaviors is so important. Um, often I speak and work with managers who uh, sort of have a double standard, but not in the way you would think. They have a double standard where they try to give more leeway and grace to their employees while not giving that same leeway and grace to themselves. And that's very damaging. Of course, it, it can be toxic the other way where, you know, we push everything on our employees and, and think we're perfect. But but flip that around Oftentimes you have these these managers and leaders who um, try to put all of these expectations on themselves um, while cutting some slack for um, their employees and their teams. And I think it's it's incredibly important that we understand and model what we want from our employees. If you want your employees to have balance, to set up boundaries, then you need to model balance and boundaries. I was once speaking with a um, police chief who said that his employees, his his police officers were burning out left and right and they never stopped. And I asked him if he stopped and he said, well, I'm the chief of police. I can't stop. So when my phone rings, I need to get it a hundred percent of the time. And I asked him, why don't you have like a backup phone, you know, like an emergency phone that you carry around 
when you're in those off times, when you're recharging and, and leave your main phone at home so that, yeah, you will be there for the real emergencies that, that need to get to you. But when you're not trusting your lieutenants, when you're not modeling the behavior of being able to walk away for some set time to refresh, then not only are you not refreshed, then not only is your bucket not full and, and we need a full bucket in order to fill other people's buckets, right? Um, so, so not only are you not at your healthiest and not only are you burning out, but your people, they're not going to do what you tell them you want them to do. They're going to do what you show them you want them to do. And if they want to be promoted and if they want to be honored and, and feel like they are a valued member of the organization, they're going to do what what they see you doing. Uh, so it's really important on those two fronts. Don't burn yourself out and also model the behaviors that you want to see. Right. Well, uh, David, thank you for being so forthright and uh, sharing that with us. And uh, when it comes to discussing this, uh, how leaders may go from feeling burnt out to finding some balance in their lives, as you mentioned, we are definitely talking to the correct person today. <laughs> so uh, would you like to give some uh, practical suggestions for audiences to assist them in handling workplace burnout? Yeah, I think I think especially right now in this moment of time where we are still you know, in this traumatic experience of this worldwide pandemic and, and everybody's life being turned upside down. And and if your um, life is starting to feel like it's going back to normal, well, there's still this sense of uncertainty out there, A. And B, we don't really experience trauma fully until the traumatic experience has passed. And so we need to be forgiving of ourselves in this moment and forgiving of our teams, our employees in this moment. Everybody's doing their best and that's what we can ask for. Um, but but so I, I would say to be forgiving and also to remove obstacles from yourself and from your team by truly identifying, going back to the basics, what is this all about for you? What is your work all about? What's the end goal here? What turned you on to this work to begin with? Let's figure that out again, like reconnect with that. And all of the noise, the bureaucracy, the interpersonal conflicts, the the, the policies and, and cultural norms that, that sort of got in the way of that, just creating all this noise. Let's, let's move those aside and get down to the core of it. Um, now is the best time to be um, revisiting our our policies both the written ones and the non-written ones that are baked into our culture right hmm. that's a great way to conclude here david on a positive note but before we uh end this show uh, let us know how our listeners can reach out to you sure um i would love to continue the conversation uh on linkedin i'm very active on there um you can sure. direct message me connect with me sure. there you can also find me on my website, illuminatepmc.com, PMC for Performance Management Consultants. Um, and uh, definitely reach out. Let's continue the conversation. Sure. Thank you for coming to the show today and sharing your knowledge, ideas and experience. And I'm so sure that it will be both engaging and valuable to our listeners. So once again, thank you for joining us, David. Thank you, Susmita. And thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and our YouTube channel for new episodes.